By this point, I'm sure that most of you have heard about the Connecticut shootings that happened today, and it's the same type of story we hear all the time. It's pretty much on a continuous loop at this point. Some masked man gets a gun, he goes up and shoots a bunch of people, and we're all very upset about it. But in this story, I think people are giving it especially a large amount of attention because the majority of people who were shot were children. This was in a middle school. I, I think it was like over 20 people who were killed that day today were children. And uh, it's especially tragic in that situation because children in many ways haven't gotten the chance to live yet. They haven't experienced their own desires and pursued their own goals, experienced their own emotions. They haven't done these things. They haven't really gotten a chance to see what it's like to be a human. So that, that's why people are upset. And inevitably, the conversation that everybody's going to have will boil down to gun control. Should we have more gun control or less? Should there be uh, stricter laws on getting guns? If so, how will they work? How will we run them? Et cetera, et cetera. And I'm not really interested in talking about that because everybody's talking about it. And I'm not sure what adding my two cents will do to help the conversation. But I do want to talk about something that I feel like a lot of people don't talk about in these situations, and that's the systemic cause behind these things. I think that people don't realize that people behave in a very cause-and-effect manner. Like, things that happen in your past have an influence on the way you act in the future. I think that when people do a crime, we make one of two assumptions about them. Either A, they're just some evil villain, like, you know, with a handlebar twizzling mustache, and they're tying a woman on the railroad tracks, or they're just crazy, like they're a nutball, and there's nothing to be said about them. There's no reason or logic behind it. I feel like most people do this, though, because they're driven to it in a certain point. Like, culture and society has just messed with their heads so much that they don't know what to do with themselves. You know, very often when you're born into poverty, you're not getting out of poverty. That doesn't happen a lot. For the majority of people, if you're born in a crappy situation, you're largely stuck there and there's no hope. You're more likely to do this type of thing if you have less to lose. Like, if you're born in some ghetto community and you have the big gang that has influence around you in your life, basically convincing you that you need to be with them for protection, only thing is by your actions of being with them, you're going to become more antisocial. And, you know, it's just a major cause and effect chain. Like, everything that happens in your life has a major effect on who you are and what you're going to do. And how are we going to fix that? I don't know. I don't know what difference you or I can make. I, I don't think I'm intelligent enough to really come up with an answer in any of these situations. I can just see that there is a problem. And it's a problem that people don't want to focus on. Because we like the idea that everybody owns their own actions and owns them own, their own selves. I, I don't really think that's too true, though, because if you're put in a nice situation, you're more likely to have a nice life and less likely to commit crimes. People commit crimes, I feel like, because oftentimes they just want attention. They're put in a position where they know that society's going to ignore them and where nobody's going to care. It just... I can't imagine being in that person's mind what he was thinking when he thought that shooting up these children was a good idea. And I shudder at the thought of what drove him to that. What was his life before that? And I don't know. People talk about that's a bad way of thought because you're sympathizing with the criminal. And you're saying, oh, well, he's not that bad of a guy. But the problem with that is you're not talking about the important thing. And in my mind, when you're talking about the important thing, when you're talking about the cause, you're talking about preventing this from happening in the future. That's the thing. I feel like a lot of people just take this as a token event, like, oh, some children died. Let's post a sad Facebook post. But in my mind, it's an actual event that has negative consequences on people, sometimes for the rest of their lives. Like, people are going to be talking about this for a few days, but the parents who are involved, this is going to affect them for years, possibly the rest of their life. And thousands of more people in the world are going to be traumatized constantly because this happens. We need to evaluate why this happens. Is there some sort of cause? Is there something that we as a society can do to fix this or at least lessen how much it happens? I don't know what to do. Once again, I'm not an expert on society and how people's minds work. I just know that there is something wrong. And I really hope that someone smarter than me comes along at some point and does something about this can restructure society, or I don't even know. Once again, I don't know. It just upsets me. And it upsets me that people aren't talking about the real problem, that there's something wrong with this person, and there's something, there's some way, maybe, that you could have prevented him from doing this. That's all I can say. It's, it's all about the cause and effect. I don't know. I really don't. I just hope that we can prevent this from happening.
because it's, it's terrible for everyone, and I just wish that we didn't live in a world where we have to be afraid to go outside and experience life without getting shot to death. That's my thoughts on the whole event, I guess.